Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. We're fishing today on the famous Belmont stretch at Hereford. And I've got my great friend, a very old friend and teammate, James. Brian Rigby with me today. We're gonna do some practicing because we've both got some team matches coming up. Um, we've got uh, a feeder match this weekend I'm fishing. Yep. And you've got uh, a two day festival coming up, haven't you? Yes, two weeks time. It's a two day spring festival on this stretch. So it'd be good to have a practice for that year. Yeah. So the two pegs we've selected, we've had a good chat with Woody this morning in the local tackle shop. Obviously Woody's always a mine of information. He's got his finger on the pulse as to where's fishing and where isn't. And we're on 55 and 56 on the rugby club bank. Um, they've been very consistent pegs this year, haven't they? Yeah, uh, they have, yeah. In the winter league, they've been great pegs for days and also there's been some great shoals of chub again yeah. this year. Yeah which is going to be really interesting today. So I think they're going to be good pegs to practice. They'll give us a good indication of how the river's fishing. So how are you going to approach your peg? Just a quick summary. Yeah, Brian. well, because we're the only ones on the bank and it's a nice day, um, I think we'll get plagued by small fish. So I, you know, I'm going to have some maggot rigs set up, but I'm going to try and catch on bigger baits, yep. uh, meat and pellets and sweet corn, things like that. Yes. See if I can select out some bigger fish. And that's been the tactics really for a couple of years here, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it has, yeah. It's been phenomenal. The amount of fish in the stretch, I think this year's been better than ever, really. You've got yeah, to say, the match has been unbelievable. Mm. Sorting out those better stamped fish is the real key. Yeah. So, I mean, this is something that we often do, isn't it, Riggers? We'll, we'll, yes. some, we'll like to go and yes. have a practice together, try mm. and work a few things out, and more importantly, try and work out what doesn't work. So, yeah. that's yeah. the theme of today. So we, we actually fished the same pegs in October, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, and a bit of a practice uh, yeah. when the river was about six foot up, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were bleak good. fishing that day, and it was yeah. it's great. So. Let's give it a go, um, probably fish for an hour or two, uh, reconvene and just try and learn what's happening and perhaps change things up a bit, all right? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, mate, let's do it. Let's have a good one.
Well, I've set two feeder rods up today. Um, one to fish the maggot and one to fish meat or big baits. And I started on the meat and had pretty much five puppy chub in five casts. And I'm already realizing that I need to make this a more efficient process because I'm hair rigging the meat and it's taking a bit of time. So I'll stick with this just for a while and I think I'm going to change over to a, a different rig to try and speed up. I might even try a different bait to, to see if I can fish with a bait that I don't need to keep changing. But this has been the case in recent matches down here. There's a great shoal of these puppy chub. That's a small one, just about three or four ounces, but they're up to a, a pound and a half. And the last winter league we had, I think Trevor Chalk won the match off the peg just above the bridge on the other side on the railings with over 70 pound of these chub. And I think there was a, a 70 or 60 pound weight over on peg 79. So there's obviously a huge shoal of these puppy chub in this area. And as we sort of mentioned at the beginning, this year and last year is all about being sorting out the, the better quality fish because the stretch is just absolutely rammed with fish. Different areas, you've got different stamps of fish. So I'm pretty sure if I would be fishing maggot at the moment, I might be getting plagued by smaller dace. What I'm intrigued to, to sort of try and refine and improve today is fishing the feeder. I mean, normally I'd be fishing the float like Brian, but because we've got this feeder only match, whereas perhaps normally I'd be fishing the feeder for bigger fish like big chub and barbel, wouldn't really been targeting these smaller stamp fish. I'd be catching them on the float. So it's going to be interesting to just sort of spend some time and try and make the whole process a lot more efficient if I draw a peg like this on the day. Obviously if I draw out the town or at the top where I'm going to be fishing for bigger chub or barbel, I'll be using more conventional tactics but anywhere down between the bridges I think there could be some great weights of these chub and dace on the feeder as well. Well I've just had a couple of missed bites there so that's intriguing. And I've still got my bait, so at the moment I'm fishing a cage feeder and I'm putting quite a bit of meat and casters in and just plugging it with some ground bait. And I think due to the amount of fish here, I'm going to need to switch over to a, a bigger feeder to obviously feed more because there's so many fish out there. Well, we're fortunate enough to fish a lot of matches on the Y, but if you're not familiar with the river or this stretch, um, it's actually really quite diverse. It's diverse in terms of the, the depths of the river along its stretch, and also by the fact that it's a spate river. And this river is like no other really in the country that you can, you can catch fish with literally 10, 12 foot on. So you've got different conditions to consider and obviously different pegs. These pegs here, at the moment we've got about three to four foot of water on. And these pegs here today will be about 10 foot deep. And most of the Y, you've got a very pronounced ledge. So you, Wherever you've got some depth, you'll have a pronounced ledge and then often quite a main channel um, throughout the stretch. And one thing that you'll know that when, whenever the river's low like this or getting lower, you tend to catch the bigger fish in the middle of the river. When the river's up, you tend to catch the fish closer to the bank because it's a very, very powerful river. 
So I'm just going to try two bits of meat on the hair rig. And I think what I might do in a minute is swap over to a bigger hook and just hook the meat because I think it'll be quicker than trying to hair rig it like I am. On the matches recently, the, the shoals of bigger chub have been caught down in the 90s, so that's on the far bank, on the Asda bank. And the sort of famous peg is peg 96. And there's been several hundred pound bags down in that area this season in the winter leagues. So really the stretch has got everything. You've got great shoals of roach and dace, uh, these shoals of smaller chub, and then the bigger chub and barbel as well. Well, I missed another bite, so I think this is going to require a serious rethink as to how I'm fishing. So I'm going to cut the hair off and just try. Just try hooking it on and I think I'm going to go up to a bigger hook. I'm fishing a size 12 at the moment and I think I could probably get away with a bigger hook and a bigger piece of meat. Well, if you are thinking of giving the Hereford stretch a go, I think the best advice is to go to the local tackle shop Woodies and get some bait and get some advice off Woody because as I mentioned at the start, he really does know the river very, very well. And because of the different varying conditions, um, he'll put you on the fish and explain the best tactics. So that's the best advice really. It's another one of those sort of stamp puppy chub about six or eight ounces. So I'm just hooking the meat on now. That's an eight mil cube. And I'm pinching four or five cubes in the feeder. Pretty much as soon as the feeder hits the bottom, the chub are onto it. Well, it's a lovely day today, which makes a change after all the horrible rain we've been having. And the river couldn't be better, really. We had a, a light frost here in Hereford today, but that doesn't seem to have stopped the fish feeding. We were into bites pretty much straight away. Well, I can see Riggers is catching some fish on the float, so it might be interesting to see how he's getting on. And get a quick summary from him. Well, it's a Boston day. The sun's out, even the micro lights are out. I've started on maggots, managed to catch a few dice and chublets. Um, I haven't been pestered by small fish as yet, so I'll stick with maggots for the time being. I'm feeding some meat, but I'm catching a lot of fish right down the peg, like that. So I'm reluctant to feed too much meat at the moment because it sinks so slow. What I want them is to come and catch on top of me, right up the peg, so it's a little bit quicker. There we go, that's a chub, little chublet. Probably six ounce. You might notice I'm fishing about the same distance out as James. It's probably about a third of the way across the river. I'm using a 16 foot number two rod, CS10 reel. It's 019 main line 
and it's a six gram bolo. Um, we've got a 14 hook on to 013 at the moment and I'm fishing three maggots on the hook. Feeding wise, I am not feeding too much meat at the moment because there's a lot of the fish catching right down the bottom of the peg. Now meat sinks quite slow and I want the fish to come up the peg really. I'll miss that bite. So what I'm doing, I'm tipping my casters onto my hemp for a little bit of meat in and feeding that combination. If the fish come right on top of the bait and I can catch on meat, I will start feeding more meat because I think that's what they prefer to eat. Obviously we're practicing today, so the goal is not to fill our nets with fish, it's, it's more to learn, learn for the matches in the future. Um, float fish with me is a lot quicker than feeder fishing. You don't have to fill a feeder up for a start. You just cast out and feed much, much quicker. And it's easy to see bites as, uh, you know, you, you, as your float goes through the water. There we go. That fish was further up the peg. That was only a small one. Small, small little chublet, about three ounces. This is so prolific, this river. It's unbelievable. Don't know what it is about the water. I, mean, I know if you go upstream, uh, the Y doesn't really go through many major towns. Like the Seven, it goes through you know, all these industrial towns. The Y goes straight from the source, through Hereford, through Ross and into the sea. Um, maybe that's why it's so prolific, I don't know but um, I've never seen a venue as good as this. It seems now the fish are starting to move up the peg a little bit. This one is, this one is a dice, beautiful fish. Gotta be six ounces. Still fishing with three maggots on the hook. We had quite a hard frost last night. And that may be why we're not getting pestered. The last time we fished here, earlier in the season, there was that many bleak head, it was, un it, was un it was unbelievable. We ended up fishing for them, a bit of practice. So one, one thing about how I like to feed, I like to have my tub of hemp close to me and I add casters to it and meat to it. So what you've got then, you've got a, a mainly hemp mix. I find if you do it the other way around, when you mix them together, you end up with more casters than hemp. And the beauty of doing it this way is you're not encouraging small fish, you're encouraging the better fish to come and have a go. Hemp sinks so fast that, uh, you know, you want the fish as close as you possibly can. You know, obviously, we're talking match fishing now. So. So I find this a better way to do it. And you can, you can regulate it. I mean, if I stopped getting bites, I would start because I'm using maggots, I would start sp spraying more maggots in, into the peg. But I don't see the need of putting maggots in at the moment because we're catching a few fish, getting some bites. Normally bring lots of bait. Uh, on a normal match, I often bring 12 pints of maggots, five pints of casters, and loads of hemp. Uh, hemp keeps in jars and things like that, so I don't waste any bait. Any maggots that I don't use, I can fridge down for the next week, or eventually I, I, I call it my caster factory. I turn them into casters, um, just to keep the cost down, really. 
because uh, you do need a lot of bait if you're drawing in the town area. Uh, if you're up the top, it can be really difficult because most of the fish migrate into town in the winter, so up the top you might not use a lot of bait at all because there's less fish up there. Yes, we need a lot of bait on the Y, so it can turn out quite expensive. I started the session slightly over depth, and but the, the fish actually come off the bottom a little bit. So it's best today to fish it just off the bottom. Uh, if it was really, really cold, I'd be looking to slow it down more. Well, they bump that one. They don't really need it uh, slowing down much today. So I'm not running to at the speed of the current, but I'm just slowing it down a little bit, and that seems to be best. In order to slow the float down, I tend to run the, the line through my fingers. And you can feel the line going through your fingers. Some people backwind the float down, but I find I get entangled if I do that, so I don't do it, don't do it that way. A little chublet. So what I'm trying to do today, I want to get the fish feeding as far up the peg as I can. I want them competing for the bait, up the peg. You can see some fish there now. So ultimately, you're catching them quicker, which in, in, in a match conditions means you can have a bigger weight. Now at the start of the session, I was catching the fish down the bottom of the peg. Now they're starting to move up the peg. The beauty of feeding the way I'm feeding now with the hemp and added to it uh, casters and meat, especially the hemp, it sinks so quick, which encourages the fish to come up, up the top, up the peg. You can also do that by throwing balls of ground bait in. One of the problems with ground bait is it does attract smaller fish. They go mad for it. So it, with a lowish river, I'm trying to catch loose feeding more today.
Right then, Riggers, so we've been fishing for just over an hour. Yeah. What have you learnt so far? Well, at, at the start, I caught all my fish down. I started on maggots, free maggots. I caught all my fish down the bottom of the peg. And so I was reluctant to feed meat because it sinks slowly. So I fed a lot of hemp with some casters in and a bit of meat. And eventually they come up the peg. I cut, cut some nice chublets. So I've had one a pound and a half and a few dice. And then as the sun, I mean, it's a bossing day. As the sun come out, the bite slowed up and every bite I had was right down the bottom of the peg. Mm. Tried meat on the other rig. That didn't work that well. Caught a couple on it. So I started introducing maggots then. Uh, which brought some small fish in the pair. I had some little fish and lots of smash maggots, but I started that started to help, mm. and I started catching. So, are you better. feeding ground bait as well as loose feeding? Or? I've fed a little bit of ground bait. Uh, I balled it at the start. Uh, the odd ball of ground bait, but doesn't really seem to make a lot of difference. To be fair, I reckon to try and catch on the meat, cut out the loose feed, mm. just gra just ground bait with meat. Ground bait with See meat. What yeah, could do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll try that. Just to uh, see, yeah, because um, you, you, I think you can't kind of get dragged into probably catching more dace. Yeah, so? yeah, yeah. The, the, the problem with maggots is the dace, and the dace are smaller than the chublets. They're actually harder to catch sometimes. The dace, <laughs> the chubs. I mean, the juvenile chub, yeah. twice the size, yeah. and they're easy to catch really when there's a yeah. lot there. Well, I, I found that I started on the. Obviously, I'm just fishing the feeder. And it's been it's been a steep learning curve because I wouldn't normally fish like mm. the feeder like this, you know. Yeah. I'd normally fish the float. And I've probably had twenty chub mm. up to about a pound, and I started off really well. You know, they were nailing the the bait every cast. Yeah. And I've learned. I think my my rig originally was totally wrong. Mm. I was fishing with a hair rig on a size twelve hook, and it was just too slow and fiddly. Yeah, putting the yeah. putting the meat on. Getting the meat on. So I changed to a slightly bigger hook. I was hooking the meat. That worked quite well. And then I tried another trick that, um, well, we should probably mention it. Lee Harris. He's pretty much told everybody yeah, anyway. He has, yeah, yeah. But over the last couple of years, he's done really well fishing with bandon pellets or boilies, hasn't he? And uh, yeah. I gave that a go. I had three or four chub immediately. It was it was like brilliant. Yeah. And then it's gone a bit funny on that. So. I thought I'd try my other rod with uh, maggots and I caught them, missed a lot of bites and I've come to the conclusion that I needed a bigger open end feeder mm. but not as heavy as what I got so I just nipped back to the van, yeah. got some different feeders and I'm going to try that. Yeah. So I'm going to try um, fishing maggot or meat mm. um, and I'm going to try introducing more bait yeah. uh, just to try and improve my sort of strike ratio in terms of hitting bites because I was probably getting one every three casts yeah, and yeah. you've got to conclude there's so many fish there yeah. I'm just trying to work out the most efficient way to catch them on a feeder gotcha. and I also got us a pasty each as well yes yeah, I think Monty wants some <laughs> so, as well doesn't he well Monty's been enjoying the, the offerings we'll give of some meat. Lunch of meat he's been having some good lunch of meat yeah, but yeah. I think we'll have that and then we'll give it another go and mm. see if we can uh, perhaps improve our catch rate with the better stamp fish. Yeah, so I'm gonna put more meat to me ground bait. I need to change that one rig as well. It's a little bit too light for actually casting it out. Yeah. You can cast the meat off the hook, you see. Okay. So I'll change that we'll get that organized. And, uh, and I think we should probably give it another hour session now. Yeah. Don't lose feed, just yeah. ground bait. Okay. And I'm gonna try a bigger feeder mm. and probably try fishing maggot on the hook, bunches of maggots. Cause that, before I finished, that was working well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okie doke, let's do it. Good luck. Boston diet and a lovely pasta. I know you shouldn't speak with your mouth full, but cheers. Okay, Rig has got three top tips for you. Tip number one, be organised. As you can see, I've got some holes in here where I cut my chopworm scissors, catapult, spare bait dropper. Everything here is to hand. Okay, Rig has top tips. Number two, have the rods already made up, lots of winders ready. You put a big loop in your main line, put the big loop through your rig, pass the winder through the big loop, and the rig is set up in seconds. There we go, even got the hook on, and we're ready to go. 
Okay, and finally, Rigger's top tip, number three, always measure your bait. Here's my ground bait. What I like to do on the Y is put six points in at a time. Three, four, five, six. Now I know it. I know exactly how much bait to add to that. There's almost a pint of casters in there. They go in. Tropicana bottle with maggots. We take the air out of them, makes them almost dead. Just stuns them. Tip some of those in. Not so many of those, just a quarter of a pint I like to put into them. Handful of meat. Now, mix it all up. And you've got a, a good, rich mix with plenty baiting. The problem on the Y is if you put a bit of ground bait in and you add your bait as you go, what happens, you, your catch rate sometimes slow, slows, you look down into your ground bait and there's not enough feed in your ground bait. By doing it in batches, measuring it, you'll always have a ground bait fully rich with loads of baiting.
what, what's happened what's happened now I, we can't really catch the chub anymore there's a peg the pegs full of dice so they seem to want maggots but loose feeded a lot of maggots got a lot of fish in the peg but they came up in the water a lot so what we're doing now fishing slightly closer and there's a lot of uh, dead maggots in the ground bait which we're feeding downstream and we're catching we're catching right on top of the ground bait now mainly dice if it's a match situation i would probably try and catch them around about eight meters to hand on a long whip but uh, that's not what we've come to try and do today so i will keep trying bigger baits to try and catch some more chub um, but the moment if you fish in bigger baits you're not getting many bites so it's as if the chub have um, just stopped feeding a little bit at the moment Well, I've been fishing for about another hour and probably added another 20 or 30 fish. I'm catching more dace than chub now and the meat isn't working as well. I'll get the odd fish on meat and then I'll just keep missing bites. And I think it's actually dace that are attacking the meat. So the last sort of 20 minutes, I've just concentrated on fishing the maggot as a hook bait with an open end feeder and it's working quite well I'm I wouldn't say it's I've sorted it out but I'm, I'm getting fish I'm getting some better chubbing amongst the days 
and I had a, a big pike on for a while, but um, that had taken a, a day, so I think this is another another dace rather than a chub. Oh no, it's a it's a small chub. So definitely maggots, my best bait at the moment. Um, it's kind of interesting really because I've messed about with different feeders as well and I've settled with this cage feeder which is actually 50 gram which is way heavier than I need to hold bottom but I think the heavier feeders just helping me helping the fish hook themselves and I've experimented with different uh, tails on the feeder as well at the moment I'm settled around about I guess that's two two and a half foot it doesn't seem to be a, a set pattern you've got to keep changing things all the time feed wise I'm using quite a sticky mix and I'm cramming as much bait in as I can so it's probably actually 50 percent ground bait 50 percent mix of maggots casters and meat because clearly there's so many fish out there you know I don't think you can overfeed it so that's another thing I've been experimenting with is the size of the feeder um, I've tried a maggot feeder but to me that's just too negative today I can't I can't get enough feeding through the maggot feeder and the great thing of fishing a cage feeder like this is I can I can mix in uh, meat as well and other bigger baits as well as maggots and when I'm fishing like this for dace and small chub on the feeder you can often get two or three bites at the cherry if you like with obviously hitting dace bites on the feeder is really difficult a lot of the times you hook them when you're just moving the feeder so that's what I've been trying as well just experimenting with how long I leave the feeder in before I move it. The two rods I've set up today are both CR10 13 foot. This is the number two and I've set up a number three so the number three is a little bit more powerful and that's the rod I'm using for fishing with bigger baits like meat. Um, both the rods are brilliant for this kind of fishing because they've got lovely progressive actions and you know you can play silver fish like dace, small chub and roach no problem. If you were to hook a, a bigger bonus fish you'd have pro no problem getting them out. Sometimes I'm not even putting the rod on the rest I'm just holding the rod, you're getting an indication like that and I've got a fish so it's pretty frantic fishing not like normal feeder fishing oh that one came off on the way back in but um, I certainly haven't cracked it yet I'm gonna got a few more things I want to try I want to try a completely different rig just to put it out of my mind and that's a, a dink 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 method I want to see if that will work so I'm going to try that next um, because really I just want to try and get the fish to hook themselves against the feeder the tip I'm using on the 13 foot number two is a is a two ounce carbon tip and I'm actually using a, a three ounce tip on the number three. It's just absolutely black with fish out there. So some of them are smaller and that's I'm definitely getting more dace now. I mean they're not bad dace, so that's actually a small chub. But that's been the the whole situation this season when we've been fishing matches. It's so frantic, there's so many fish in your peg. Trying to work out how to catch the bigger stamp fish sometimes is, is really difficult. 
And I'm, what I'm doing today with this is I'm fishing a size 14 hook. It's a big size 14. And I'm putting three or four maggots on. So basically I'm just adding a maggot every time I get a fish or bring the feeder in. It's definitely not, no need for any kind of finesse or anything. But uh, it's good practice. I'm glad I came because for the match on Sunday, if I draw a peg like this, I think if I get my head down, you could be looking at catching 20 or 30 pound of these fish. And I don't think that will be, oh, that one's come off as well. I don't think that will be enough to, to win the match, but I think it's going to be enough to maybe sneak you in the frame or certainly get your section. So hopefully I'll be on one of the flyer pegs like 96 and be catching some big chub. But I think just sitting for a big fish on this peg on the day would be the wrong tactics. I know there's the chance of the odd barbel here, but your target weight's going to need to be certainly 25, 30 pound, I think. So when you're fishing the feeder like this and you're literally in and out catching fish very, very quickly, you've got to get everything as efficient as you can. So you'll notice that I'm able to unhook the fish quickly, put another maggot on. The, the hook length's a nice length so that I can just hold the hook and go straight into my ground bait bowl, feed that up and then basically by just underarming it like that I'm back into position. So I'm just trying to maximise the speed and efficiency of how I'm casting and sort of managing the feeder.
Well, I've just had a great run of catching some nice dace on the feeder. Um, I wouldn't say I've cracked it, but I'm really pleased. It's been a great practice session. And I just thought I'd just stop and show you the rig that I'm using, or the one that's been most successful. That's a 50 gram cage feeder. Um, and I've got it running between a swivel stop and a gripper stop there. So it's on quite a, a short sort of bolt rig effect there. I suppose that's about um, three or four inches, that's all. I think that's helping to enhance the bolt effect of when I'm catching the dace. And I mentioned about the cage feeder. I've tried a, a maggot feeder and I think when it's harder, perhaps when the water temperature is colder, you're not trying to catch so many fish, a maggot feed is probably better because you can uh, gradually introduce the maggots into your swim. But because there's so many fish feeding today and so many different sizes of fish, I think a big open end feeder like that is going to get the bait to the bottom and it's going to disperse really quickly. And with it being a decent size, it means I can feed a good amount of bait. So the actual hook length itself, I think I referenced it in the video, is about two, two and a half foot long. Um, I'm using this 017 Pro Gold, which is a breaking strain of 3.4 pound. So that it's, I mean, that's quite heavy really, but it's a nice robust line, doesn't tangle up. And if I do hook a bed of fish, like a big chub or a barbel, I've got half a chance of getting it out. Hookwise, I've tried lots of different hooks today. And at the moment, I've settled on this, which is a Census 3180BZ. It's a number size 14, which is, which is a big 14. That's really more like a 12. So, I mean, that really does seem like a big hook to be catching dace on. Um, I'll just quickly bait up for you and I'll show you. But sometimes when you're fishing for dace on the feeder like this, as crazy as it sounds, a single maggot, even on a big hook like that, will be the best way to hit the bites. But today I've found putting three or four maggots on, which I think is providing a, a really good sized bait because really I want to be catching those puppy chub rather than a dace if I can. I'm finding they're just coming in and out the peg. Uh, to start with we were catching a lot more of those chub but now I'm catching more dace, but I still want to give myself the best chance of catching a chub. And I think with a bigger bait like that, that's going to help. And also, because I'm pretty much having a fish a chuck now, I'm just, every time I reel in, maybe one or two of the maggots is burst, I just add another maggot on. I'm not worried about the fact that there's bits of maggot and broken bits of maggot still on the hook. The fish are feeding that confidently. It just simply doesn't matter. And then I just thought I'd quickly show you my mixing close-up. So the great fact of using a sticky mix like this and then you couldn't get more simple than the ground bait. I'm using it's uh, one third white crumb and two thirds brown crumb and as you can see there that's the sort of mix I'm using so it's laced with casters and bits of meat and a few maggots and that means that I can really pack the feed into the feeder so it's a very quick operation, all that bait's holding together and the majority of that's going to get to the bottom and come out the feeder on the bottom. So it's a really sort of positive mix for when you're catching a lot of fish like we are today. So a good trick today, um, obviously I've been catching in the later part of the session on maggots is every so often just to put a piece of meat on like that. We're feeding quite a bit of meat and I can still use the same hook as I am with the maggots, just take the maggots off and put a piece of meat on. And that's worked well, I've caught a few nice chub doing that as a little bonus. My other rod has got a, a bigger hook and it's more sort of ta tailored to catching on the meat, but that's been a, a good, uh, good little tip today and it's worked well. Hopefully it will work well on Sunday when I fish the match. Well Riggers, that was a great session. Yes, I enjoyed this. Fished uh, just under five hours and I've had just a fraction under 30 pound. Yeah. And you've had what, 26? About 26 pound, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a yeah. few more chub than you, didn't you I? You did, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So I think that was the difference. But uh, I suppose if we summarize my sort of practice session, mm -hmm. um, 
It was obviously more chub feeding to start with, and I could mm. catch them on the meat, mm. and it was pretty fast and frantic. Uh, and then it kind of calmed down, and by far the better bait for me was a bunch of maggots. I could, yes. I could catch yes. the nice dace and uh, catch the odd chub as well. So yeah. it's been a great practice. The other thing I suppose to take away is um, catching on a cage feeder. Was that better, as, was it? As opposed to a maggot feeder, yeah. I could really pile the bait in, lots of casters, mm. lots of maggots and, and meat and pretty much I've had a bite every chuck. It's been great practice because I haven't really needed to fish like that for a while. Yeah, you know, the river's yeah. been so good, hasn't it? It's been more whip and float than feeder. But yeah, yeah. So for me on Sunday, I think that's a great practice. If I draw anywhere between the bridges, mm -hmm. that's going to be my tactics. Yeah. yeah. What about you? How'd you get on? Well, I caught some chub at the start. I caught some on me, but maggots was better. And, and eventually the, you couldn't catch. You'd put a piece of meat on, you'd float a top like that. Yeah. So then you needed to fish maggots and target the dice. Um, by loose feeding maggots, they wanted maggots, but by loose feeding them they come up in the water, so that was quite difficult. So in the end I fed lots of bait, crammed in my ground bait, yeah. through the balls well downstream, loose fed a bit of hemp, a few casters in in front of me occasionally, and a bit closer as well, and caught a lot of dice towards the end. And right at the end they were just queuing up the dice were at the end. Well, I think that's been a really... Uh kind of good education as well hasn't yes, it yes um, the thing to take away from the meat is when it when it's right it goes straight away good if yeah. it doesn't go go get back on the and maggots. you can keep yeah. trying it throughout the session and yes. maybe nick yes. a couple of quick fish and then back on the maggot yes i mean in match condition today you would have caught on a long whip here yeah and you would have also you'd have caught on a shallow waggler as well sure so there's different ways but i didn't uh, it's a practice it's not about filling in that so i wanted to work the the bolo yeah. and the meat lines and yeah. I go away happy with, with the midday really, yeah, it's been good. Well we quite like doing these practice sessions don't we, you'll never go pleasure fishing will you? Oh, it's not, it's not it's no, no, it needs to be motive, it needs to be motive, <laughs> yeah. to be motive. if you've got to catch a fish that's to be motive for me. Yeah, yeah well yeah. I think it's great and um, we can both learn off each other and share information, I think that's another big advantage. Yes, well, well we do on a, a few occasions when we go don't we, so it's always good when we go practicing, yeah, yeah. So, I suppose practice makes perfect, doesn't it, Riggers? Practice makes perfect. And we'll perfect, keep practicing. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, we're going to split this dairy milk. What do you reckon? Yes, let's 50 50. Well, should we give the cameraman a bit? Nah, nah, nah we'll just nah, keep it for nah. ourselves. Fair enough. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thanks for watching.